Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. Please click the three dots menu at the top or look along the bottom row until you see a little cog icon, just um, a little wheel. Click that and because YouTube has now changed the way it lists the menu items, you might see something called higher picture quality and you might see something called automatic and you might see something called advanced. Most or all of my videos actually are shot in 1080p format. That's so you have a good clear picture to work with. So please, if you're not conserving your data, please click advanced and then click 1080p or 720p so that you have a good clear picture to work with. Today, I am going over a prophecy from the 10th of March. Um, it took me a little while to put this up and it's actually, I would say it's two prophetic words in one. One part of the prophecy is talking about a certain type of natural disaster that will come to the United States and indeed the whole world. And I've spoken of it quite, quite a few times before whenever I do America prophecies. And the other part of the prophecy is dealing with um, a well-known servant of the Lord who has in his own time passed on, gone on to glory to be with the Lord. And the Lord spoke to me about this man and said certain things about this man. And even though I don't know much about this man in depth, I follow the leading of the Lord and I will explain all those things in the prophecy. Today's prophecy is from March the 10th, 2021, and the title is Kuiper Belt and fire. The banner scripture is this. The first angel sounded and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the trees were burned up and all green grass was burned up. Revelation chapter eight and verse seven. And so it was, it was, it was during the middle of the night. It would be somewhere four o'clock, something, something like that, as, as I could remember when I woke up and the Lord spoke to me and the Lord said, Kuiper belt. Now I've often shared that there are many different ways that the Lord communicates with me sometimes outright in a dream. So I will have a dream and I will see images. I will see situations. I will hear conversations or I will even travel in this dream. I've shared that some of my dreams are so real that it's only when the Lord pulls me out and I actually feel a pulling sensation um, as if I'm coming from somewhere else. It's only when the Lord pulls me out of the dream that I am able to know it is a dream that I've been having. Other than that, the dream is so real that all my responses are exactly what I would do in real life because I don't know that it's not real life. There are other times when the Lord will come and um, speak to me. It's not a dream. There's no picture. It's just me sleeping and the voice of the Lord speaking to me and telling me things or sometimes teaching me things, sometimes for my own personal edification and sometimes to put on the master's voice. So this time the Lord came and he said, Kuiper belt. And as I'm sleeping, I heard his voice saying, Kuiper belt. And then after another, a, a, a brief while, Kuiper belt. But because he didn't follow it up with anything else, I kept on sleeping. However, at 7 a.m., um, the Lord woke me up and he said that the rocks beyond the Kuiper belt are on fire. And his words were red rocks. Burning rocks are approaching the planet. Multitudes of hot rocks like lava are approaching Earth. And when they reach the Kuiper Belt, they will pass through it and they will hit the planet in every conceivable place. Earth as you know it will be devastated by what will be nothing less than a rain of fire. Now I've spoken of this coming of hot rocks and burning rocks many, many times before. Um, it came quite frequently in the recent prophecy, I think over the tops of the buildings is one prophecy and also another prophecy called in one hour, America's word of devastation. And basically what the Lord said in those two prophecies is, despite the fact that he has said that these rocks are coming to earth, 
he honed in on the United States and said that the coming of these rocks will be part of the judgment of mystery Babylon. Now, I'm sure that those who have been with this channel for a while have heard me mention mystery Babylon very often, more than once. And that's with good reason. The Lord God has had many mysteries throughout times. The Bibles, the Bible is full of mysteries. But at the same time, if you read the prophetic writings of the Lord very carefully, you see that he has sealed things up only for a time. So the Lord could speak to an Ezekiel or speak to a Daniel and then reveal things that he doesn't quite unfold. He could even speak to a, a John, the revelation later, the writer of Revelation, and he reveals things for a time, but he doesn't open up the whole mystery. So what these men were doing in their time were hearing the word of the Lord and then being faithful and diligent to write it down, even if they did not have the full understanding of what they were recording. However, now, because these are different prophetic times, these are times where the Lord is opening end time seals and making end time mysteries known to us. And to those who are wise, I always say this to those who are wise, to those who are really inclined to have an understanding of where we are and what's going on. These are the times to talk less and listen more for the simple reason that what you have been reading or what you may have been taught could be completely opposite, contrary, and juxtaposed as in totally non-intersecting non with what God actually meant in the prophetic writings. So this is the time for us, for you, for me, for whoever finds this video to actually make ourselves available and listen to the things that the Lord is revealing. I know here on this channel, the Master's Voice End Times Prophecy Blog channel, which is the full name. This is a support channel for the blog that I run for the Lord. And you can find the blog's address by looking in the description box below. I see many people asking in the comment section. And yet, this is something I say every video. If you want to visit the blog, everything, con everything about the ministry is below in the description box. Always read the description box so you can know what today's video is about and you can find similar prophecies listed for your convenience. God is opening end times mysteries for our edification. I'll go one step further and I'll say that God is also opening the end time mysteries for our safety. Why do I say this? If you are not aware of the times that are coming to the earth, if you're somebody who's just found this channel for the first time, and this is your first time hearing someone say that boiling rocks are coming from beyond space to land on your nation, the United States, or maybe to land on your nation, Puerto Rico, or Haiti, or the Dominican Republic, or Martinique, or St. Lucia, or Grenada, or any of the countries that are close enough to the United States to be affected, then this is the time for you to actually listen closely so that you can get the heart and the gist of what God wants to say to us in these end times. This prophecy is absolutely going to address the question of Mystery Babylon because here at the Master's Voice, the Lord has opened that end time mystery and has said to me, this one messenger here, that the United States of America is Mystery Babylon. I see people squabbling about this all the time on the blog, um, in the comment section, and I've always said that I can't really speak to that. I'm not here to convince anyone of anything. So whether you think that I'm false or true, it does not have any effect on the fact that I will continue to sit here with my tablet and read out to the hearing of all who want to listen the Lord's prophetic words as he has entrusted them to me. And I will continue doing so until God tells me to stop. And it will be very interesting when I stop because he said something to me in this prophecy that, to be honest, did not sound very good. So after the Lord spoke about the hot rocks, he said that America's space people, and I knew he was talking about NASA. He said America's space people know about these rocks, and every major government of the Western world knows that these rocks are approaching the planet. He said, Celestial, as long as any country has the sophistication to actually observe space up close, 
as long as they have the kind of technology that lets them study the skies, or if it's a nation that America shares her secrets with, meaning that this is a, a nation that America allows to access her intelligence, to find out the secrets and, and the things that she keeps hidden even from her own public, God says that that government knows that these boiling rocks are on the way to earth. He also said that any government that can observe the skies, observe space, or any government that is a friend to America knows the extent of the devastation that these coming rocks will cause. Now it goes without saying that if a nation is a nation that doesn't have a space program, if this is a nation that doesn't have a Hubble telescope or the ability to study what goes on in the skies, or if this is a nation that America does not consider worth having any kind of intelligence sharing programs with, like the way she trades information with Mossad or she trades information with MI5 in the United Kingdom, um, then that nation has absolutely no idea that there is this danger and that these rocks are coming to the earth. That nation, which represents a huge amount of the earth really, is in the dark. So the Lord said that these governments have chosen not to tell the public because of the kind of panic this will cause. But all I can say to us is that I thank God for the fact that even if the governments of the world are um, co-opted basically, and even if they do not respect their citizens enough to make secret information known to them, I thank the Lord that we have a Holy Spirit. I thank the Lord that we have a Father in heaven who reveals his secrets to messengers that he has chosen and then sends those people to make these things public to all. And the reason that God warns us is because he doesn't want us to be caught off guard. He wants us to get our souls in order, to get our lives in order, to repent and to live righteous before him so that we can be found acceptable in his sight and seek protection from him. So after the Lord said these things, I began to see what looked like old dead firewood um, floating in, in space. So I saw what looked like old dead pieces of wood on fire. And the images were very close to my view at first. So all I was seeing was chunks of wood burning in front of me. And um, it took a while before I realized that this is not actually wood, but this, it was some very old rocks. You could see how old these rocks were. They were so pitted. You know, when, when a rock has tons of chips in it because other rocks have bounced against it or sand has blasted it until it's so chipped and pitted. And so I was looking at very old gray rocks moving through space. And as I was watching these rocks, I saw that they changed color and they went from gray and they lightened up into a very pale gold. And then they became orange and then they got darker and darker until they turned a deep red and they burst into flames. And then when they burst into flames, sorry, um, the picture then zoomed out and then I could see what looked like a whole sky a whole army of boiling rocks of every size and shape um, coming in one direction. And they were not small as I thought when they were close to my eyes, but when they drew out, I saw that some of these rocks were as big as a tree and not just any tree, but I used the example of a baobab tree. And a baobab tree has a huge stout trunk. It's a very sturdy, thick and tall tree. And yet some of these, these, these old gray rocks that were on fire were um, as thick as a baobab. And each one was burning with a cone of fire behind it like a tail. And they were all headed towards one small location that I saw, which I assume was, was us. And then um, that was the end of that prophetic download from the Lord. And now, even though I, re I, I received this word about the Kuiper Belt um, on March the, let me see the date, please. March the 10th, I decided to share in this prophecy what had happened just briefly the day before. So when March the 8th ended and I went to sleep and it was that period where March the 8th was turning into March the 9th, the Lord did the same thing that he did with the Kuiper Belt. He said the words, Dumitri, 
Dumitru Dudaman to me. So I'm fast asleep, but the Lord says Dumitru Dudaman, and I'm sleeping. And then I hear it again, but again, because no prophetic word comes, no dream comes, there was no reason for me to wake up and record anything. So I slept, I woke up and I had my normal day. And then on the evening, or should I say at night on March the 9th, I decided to go and get some laundry done. So I went to do my wash uh, at about 11 p.m. at night, which is when I had time. I went to do my wash and as I was loading my watch, the Lord says to me, Dimitru Dudaman. And then I thought, oh, okay, I, I remember this man. I remember this old man that I was once made aware of by the Father several years ago. And that was many years ago. This was in 2015, I think it was, that I first heard about this man from God. And so after 30 minutes of listening to this man, because I, I did what anybody would do, um, rather than going to look for a website to, to, to read up on him, I simply put his name into YouTube and, and tried to see what would come up. And I found a testimony of him and I started listening to it. And I realized that I, I had watched this thing before a long time ago. And after only 30 minutes of listening, I knew why God had br brought this man up. God brought this man up because of the message that God gave this man, which is in many ways identical to the message that the Lord has given me. Now, as far as I understand, God spoke to this man in the 80s, which I was still eating porridge then. So um, God spoke to this man a long time ago, and he, I, he was one of the first preachers to tell America to her face that God says that she is Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, um, I'm almost at 300 prophecies on the mastersvoice.com. Almost 300 prophetic words that I've received from the Lord. And in so many of those prophecies, the Lord calls America, New York City in particular, Sodom and Gomorrah. Even if you're not a Christian, you cannot be asleep to the huge uh, gender debate, excuse me, that is raging in the United States and across the world, though not as hot in the rest of the world. Basically, the hub of this whole gender debate is the United States of America, and for good reason. Because America has, in one prophecy God said, America has appointed herself as the universe sexual God, meaning that America has given herself the dubious title of being the nation that will decide what sexual sexuality is. America has decided that she will redefine sexuality, not only for herself, but she's going to encode it into law as much as she can. And then she's going to redefine it for everyone else. And any nation that doesn't want to play the gender games that America plays will be penalized, will be punished, will not be able to get money from the IMF and the World Bank, or will just be stigmatized in the international space. She's going to write poison pen letters about those countries in her um, economic journals and in her media and make little documentaries about how repressive they are. She's going to use words like dictator and regime. And basically, she's just going to blackball those nations simply because they don't want to be nations that say a man can be a man on Tuesday and a woman on Wednesday. And that's all in the name of freedom. And so for many reasons, the Lord has said in the prophecies on this blog that I run for him, that the United States is Sodom and Gomorrah. And all the way back in the 80s, this little short man from the nation of Romania, who never even learnt enough English to express himself here in America, though he lived in America for very many years, um, it's not to my knowledge that Pastor Dudeman ever learned how to communicate directly in English and therefore he went everywhere traveling for an 11 year period with his grandson Michael. And Michael was the one who translated for his grandfather, translated all his dreams, translated all his prophecies and this was the man that God was bringing to my attention that night, March the 9th. Dimitri Dudeman was also one of the first to tell America that God says, you, America, are Mystery Babylon, according to Revelation chapter 17 and 18. You, America, are the nation that God once held as a golden cup that he loved so much. 
Dimitri Dudeman was the first pastor to directly repeat from an angel that told him in one hour, America will burn. In one hour, Vegas will burn. In one hour, Florida will burn. In one hour, San Francisco will burn. These words are repeated verbatim on the master's voice. And that is because I hear them from the Lord all the time. I see people coming to the blog and asking, is it an hour? Is it an actual hour? Is it a spiritual hour? What kind of hour is it? This man said that God told him it's an actual hour of time. The Lord has simply said to me, in a single hour, America will burn. I have multiple prophecies on the blog where in one case, I think it's in the prophecy arrows. I woke up from sleep. At least I think I woke up. But when I woke up, I was not in my room. I was in downtown Manhattan, fully dressed, standing among the skyscrapers. And when I looked up to the sky, the entire sky was filled with nuclear weapons. More nuclear weapons than I have ever seen in any movie. All of them headed towards New York City. All of them had burst the tip. I did not know that missiles could burst the tip and I had to go and do research and I found that actually there's a certain type of very long and thin missile that looks like a pencil and when it's, I don't know, when it's lit or when it's flying, the tip opens up and fire, you can see fire fizzing out of it in four directions. And that is what I saw. They had already burst the tip and they were already lit with fire at the, at the top and they were coming in towards New York City. The Lord has said that the United States will be judged harshly and that she will experience a harsh and biting wind. That's the name of another prophecy on the master's voice, the harsh and biting wind. And in that prophecy, the Lord said that there will come what he called basically an equalizing wind in that this wind will not make a distinction between children, babies, old people, young people, men or women. This wind will enter into the homes of the rich, he said, and the homes of the poor. And this wind will cause, and I quote, the eyes to dissolve in the sockets the tongue to dissolve in the mouth and the flesh to liquefy and dissolve on the bone. America, you are well aware of what you did after Pearl Harbor. So I know that this description is not new to you. It is not surprising you. And you know that the Lord is describing even from the prophet's language way back then, the impact of a nuclear weapon. That is the only thing that dissolves the tongue in the mouth the eyes in the socket and melts the flesh from the bones. The story is said in Japan that you can still see the place where the people were vaporized and their body or their shadow or their flesh was scorched on the earth. So where they were standing, they just basically melted there, sank into the ground and those dark marks of where they melted are still there in Japan. So on this channel, I do not spend a lot of time reading the comments or replying to them. I've said multiple times that just the basic work that I do and then the things that the Lord gives me to do as tasks that doesn't leave a lot of time for me to spend time in the comment section, reading, answering each other. The comment section on this blog and the comment section um, here on the channel are basically for those who watch the videos to discuss among themselves. If you see someone's question and you know the answer to it, you can go ahead and respectfully reply to it as long as nobody uses profanity. Um, it doesn't really bother me, but I'm not here to try and convince you. In fact, when the Lord sent me to find out about Pastor Dudeman, after I listened for a while, I decided to just go to the internet and read. And what I found was the usual American denial, the usual American refusal, and the usual American arrogance, saying that this man is a false prophet, saying that, oh, look, he died and nothing happened. Clearly, he was mistaken. And besides, we'll all be gone in the rapture anyway. And who told him anyway that America is Mystery Babylon? Well, may God rest the soul of Pastor Dudeman. 
I've never spoken another, about another messenger on this channel and I am not likely to. But the fact that this man has passed on means that at least his words are open to be shared to those who have ears to hear. Pastor Dudeman was a very bold man, in my opinion, simply because in the 1980s, this was the height of the Saddam Hussein fascination of the United States. The United States, as I've said in the earlier prophecies, which you can find on the Russia and China playlist, has a fascination with the boogeyman. When I say that, I'm saying that in order for this country to run, there always needs to be a well-profiled enemy. The leaders of America don't seem to know how to govern unless they have created a human evil scarecrow to present before the American people and tell them, for this administration, this is our bad guy. We're fighting this guy. This is the guy who is the enemy of freedom. We're going to take him down at all costs. And what they do is they rile up the soul of the people into this very fake form of patriotism that actually has nothing to do with real life. And then once the people are focused on that enemy, it allows the leaders to then pursue that enemy for actual personal gain and things that benefit only a very niche portion of the society. But everybody feels this is our enemy, our group enemy. We're fighting this enemy. And so in those days, of course, the boogeyman of choice was Iraq, Saddam Hussein. And so everybody was convinced that Mystery Babylon had to be Iraq because Saddam Hussein fit the profile of Antichrist to a T. And on top of that, uh, just look at the way they were. And on top of that, Iraq and Iran occupy the exact geographical location of ancient Babylon. So it's perfect. And then, of course, you have the crowd that has never stopped being faithful adherents to the belief that Mystery Babylon is the Catholic Church. It doesn't matter that Revelation 17 and 18 portray Mystery Babylon as a nation of great fighting skill, a nation of great international influence, a nation that basically is the pulse point of all the nations, meaning that whatever she does, every other nation follows it. It also says that Mystery Babylon is a cup that is full and overflowing of fornications and filth of all kinds, every perversion under the sun, and that all the nations have drunk from her cup and followed suit. How on earth are we going to say that Muslim nations have drunk from Rome's cup? But yet in Muslim nations, everybody knows Coca-Cola, Madonna, and the Kardashians. This nation is the nation that has flooded the earth with her perversions. This nation is the nation with the standing army in everybody else's country, the military bases far flung all over the world, the world's policeman, the world's economic giant, the one who tells everybody how, what kind of crop they can grow and how much they can sell it for. This is the nation that God exposed to Pastor Dudeman long before I even got out of kid's school. He was bold and he was alone confronting these misconceptions, telling America that no, you are the harlot that practices abortion, homosexuality, same love, and every other type of perversion. It's you. You are the woman in the red robes that rides on the back of the beast. It's hard for you to hear, but there are so many dreams that the Lord has given me that shows that indeed America is that nation that is going to be the hub, the center, the home of the beast system. Surprise, it is not the EU. It is not Rome over there with her Catholics and nobody even knows what they get up to except for the sex scandals. It's this nation. This is the economic giant, the darling of the merchants, the country that buys all their goods. This is why when Mystery Babylon is struck, the Bible says that the kings of the earth and the merchants of the earth stand afar off and they lament and weep over her with a mixture of shock and terror to see such punishments being rained upon her by the Lord God Almighty. For the scripture says, strong is the Lord who judges Babylon. Mix for her 
a double cup and pour it back to her for her sins and her abominations have reached up to heaven. But then, all the way back then in the 80s, as it is now in the 2020s, how many people are willing to accept what God is saying? How many people are so bonded to pride that even when they hear the prophetic word of the Lord coming forth, they desist and they say, no way, it's not us. And besides, we're going to be raptured before anything happens. Maranatha, it is very painful to be deceived about prophetic timelines. And I said here that it is a pity that for 40 years, the same prophetic word has come from the Lord. Another thing that this man said I found so interesting, and I only found that out today, is that he said that this nation would be invaded by Russia and China. Russia and China are the two constant nations that the Lord God gives me and shows me. Twin horns, he calls them, that will spearhead an invasion of this nation by air, by ground, and by sea. The Lord said that America will be struck in a blitzkrieg type of warfare. The type of warfare that Hitler debuted in the 1940s. Back then, warfare was so slow that even as you were making moves, your codes could be cracked and the other people could mobilize and know they're coming from the flank or they're coming from here. Hitler was the first person to go by air, by sea, and by, and by land, and he moved in stingray horns and such strange formations that Europe was absolutely paralyzed before him. That is why those Nazi tanks just rolled into Poland and rolled into France and just rolled into Austria and just, they almost took England. If Hitler had not, after causing the British army to flee in embarrassment, such that shrimping boats and fishing boats had to come and pick up her navy because he scuttled her ships like that. If he had not had what is known as a moment of military insanity and decided to show gentlemanlike sportsmanship to the British and allow them 24 to 48 hours to come and pick up their sailors, he would have taken the whole thing. And we would be living in a very different world today. It's probably just the mercy of God that caused that man as a military strategist to hold back when he should have all military theolog I mean military historians now admit if he had gone for broke as he should have, this video probably would be subtitled and spoken in German. The Lord said that Russia will come here so swiftly and will strike America in the heart. There's a prophecy on the blog entitled The Heart Attack. The Lord showed me the sky full of parachutes, just full of parachutes. Russian soldiers falling into America like bees. I have a prophecy called D-Day where I saw the sea. The people were coming up out of the cold icy sea around the coasts of the USA like seals, not Navy seals, actual water seals. They were coming up out of freezing water. And what God was saying to me is celestial, observe the bear. She has no problem with cold. The cold is her old friend. In the prophecy, North America, said the Lord, prepare for your winter wars. When it's cold, you hibernate. But in the cold, the bear of Russia is strong. And yet still people keep talking. As if, if they say, I don't believe you, then I'll say, oh, oh my, oh, I, I, I see if you don't believe me, I should probably stop. <laughs> the Lord spoke to me and he said that Russia and China will take America off to slavery. That will be the next video that I make. If I have time to make it today, I will make it today because the Lord has revisited the theme of slavery in the United States. 
So Dmitry Dudeman was, to my knowledge, the first person to be brave enough to go to these fancy American uh, Christian conferences that everyone was always so hyped up about back in the day. And as a speaker, after everyone had revealed all the mysteries of God's going to do this and God is getting ready to do that, Mr. Dudeman would quietly take the stage and with his grandson next to him, he would reveal to the United States that Iraq is not Babylon and the Catholic Church is not Babylon and that America is the whore. You are the mystery. You are Babylon, thus says the Lord. May his brave soul rest in peace. The last thing which I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I will now say. I said that I am going to keep speaking until the time that the Lord tells me to stop. While I was in that laundry and I was listening to God talk to me about this man who has passed on, he said to me, your words are the harbinger for America. After you finish speaking, powerful winds will begin to blow in this nation and the end will come for them. And I said that at 11 p.m., just trying to do your laundry, those are very heavy words to hear. And I sat there and I put my head in my hands and I just rested my hands on my on my on my legs and I was listening to the Lord and he was telling me quite a few things that um that I will not share here but I googled what headwinds and harbinger means headwinds are powerful forces that block forward movement and progress and a harbinger is a prophetic sign and it's never a positive one so I just want to say that I know that the United States can be very resistant to truth. The Lord did warn me. I said that to those who want to understand more about the person you see before you on this video, you should visit Ezekiel, Ezekiel 2, Ezekiel chapter 2 and Ezekiel chapter 3. Read those chapters because those are the chapters the Lord gave me to describe the people that he was sending me to talk to in the United States of America. But understand, and I close with this. Red rocks are coming from the sky. Huge hot rocks coming through the Kuiper Belt, smoldering coals approaching our planet through something called the Kuiper Belt. I'm also declaring that America is Mystery Babylon, that the Lord God showed the nation of America mercy almost 50 years ago by sending them the pastor Dumitru Dudeman from Romania, but nobody wanted to believe him. And now the Lord God brought the memory of this old pastor to me, Celestial, a messenger of the Lord, and said that America is the subject, the object, and the center of Revelation chapter 17 and 18. She is the nation whose punishments will catch her by surprise, and every other nation will watch this in shock. I don't know when the headwinds will blow and I don't know when the harbinger will begin. All I know is that I'm not yet done speaking the words that the Lord Jesus Christ has given to me. May the Lord bless you. I've delivered the prophecy, Kuiper Belt and Fire. I'll be back with another video today if I can, but if not, I am Celestial and this is the Master's Voice. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for sharing these videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for those of you who send me encouraging text messages and um, email support and financial support. May God bless you and multiply 